Hey guys. Oh my God, I look so disgusting. Oh my God, two people are running. That made me feel bad about myself. I feel like I'm just getting worse looking as these videos progress. But first, I'm gonna start out by reading some comments that I liked this week. So the first one's actually an email I got. <laughs> I got it like in the middle of the night. It was a PayPal. Hey, you can like send people requests on PayPal to send you money. It was like a request from some random girl for me to send her money. And the message is just feed me woman from this girl called Emily McIver and the amount requested was 420 which like I respect like that's funny I didn't know whether to be scared or like laugh so I'm taking it as a joke but also like don't do it again I got two questions about ADHD so the first one is just from Bridget Woods ADHD that's it no nothing else she just commented ADHD like fair enough I also get it and then the next one is Keelan I don't think you're self-obsessed you probably just have ADHD I'm literally exactly like you and it's so hard you're like I'm not rude or self-obsessed I just have so much shit in my head that I just need to get out and word vomit. Bleh, yeah. Okay, so I related more to that one. Yeah, she said it in a nice way. But the funny thing is, I was going out with someone before and because he was so like irritable and would talk all the time, I was like, I think you have ADHD. I said it to him. And then he got tested like after we broke up and he texted me one day and he was like, I actually do have ADHD. So maybe it takes one to know one and maybe I do have it. But there's no point in getting myself tested because I don't want to go and riddle him. I'm just not going to. Next one. This one just like really resonated with me for some reason. I don't know why. Like she didn't say much, but all it says is, woman, everything will be grand. That was nice. She didn't have to explain herself. She didn't have to go on too long about it. It was just straight to the point, straight facts. And I respect it. She's right as well. Okay, next one. This one got a fair few likes as well. So other people agree, apparently. You literally just sit in your bedroom and talk and I feel like I'm watching a blockbuster, but one that leaves me feeling good about myself and with a big grin on my face. That's so nice. Mission accomplished. That's all I want to do for people. Hopefully this one doesn't disappoint. I feel like I'm setting the standards too high for each one. So like each one has to be more chaotic than the next one. But I feel a bit relaxed today. So this one will be kind of chill. I feel like the OnlyFans one I was screaming at the camera. I look like I'm kind of bald. I'm kind of into it though. Anyway, this is real. This is me. I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. Also, in reference to the last video when I said I feel like my tits are shrinking, they actually are. Because I bought myself a bra like three weeks ago when I was a D cup. And now I'm literally B. It's like there is a gap. And then I was on the phone to my friend and she was like, yeah, I noticed that. They did kind of shirt and I was like, oh my god, you're not supposed to say that. Like, that's my business. I also got a comment to my last video too, being like some random man going, she looks like a man. And I commented being like, a hot man at least. Because I think I'd be a hot man. Like, I also believe that I have. Like, I have some masculine features, but I think that I'd be a hot, like, I'd be a good looking man. I'm not taking it as an insult. Should I just zoom in so I don't look as bald? Will that help? Does it? So how's everyone doing? I was making this video mostly because loads of people have been asking me since my breakup, like, how do you get over a breakup during quarantine? Because I personally, like when I was in my third, no, it's like second week of my breakup, I also like watched loads of YouTube videos and like TED Talks, like how to get over a breakup and how heartbreak can create, like it like triggers the same part of your brain as drug addiction. So anytime you check their stories, it's basically you getting that hit, like you getting that drug hit. I looked way too into it, but it didn't help at all. Like I still was doing the self-destructive shit, not really knowing how to deal with my emotions, talking to thousands of people on the internet about my feelings. So I don't think that watching someone is actually gonna make you take that advice, but I'm gonna do it anyway. I'm just gonna, I feel like it might help someone and it might make people feel less alone. Cause one thing I wanted to address is the shameful stuff you do during a breakup. No one ever talks about that part. Everyone's like, don't text them for 30 days, make them miss you, have your glow up and, and live your best life and they'll regret everything <laughs> and it's like but is anyone gonna talk about the times we like drunk text them and like not get a reply is anyone gonna address that part because i is it just me am i just pathetic or is it everyone so my personal advice is and how i because i feel like i'm at the stage now where I, I can actually i'll explain further in the video anyway but i can actually be like i know this was the right thing you know people say that they're like i know this was for the best but they don't actually believe it because i was saying that at the start being like i know it's for the best but secretly in my in the back of my mind I was like, I'm thinking of this fantasy where he like calls me and he's like, I actually love, you're the only person I'll ever love and we're gonna run away together and all this bullshit. Don't lie, we all do it. Obviously I was thinking that like, maybe we will end up get, getting back together, like just at the back of my head, like, oh, have faith queen. And obviously the witch talk shit, so toxic. Everything on TikTok that's like reading the tarot cards, it's like, he'll come back to you. So toxic, don't ever believe them. Such general readings. Anyway, now I'm at the stage where it's like, queen, 
No, okay? Now I feel like I can, that actually gives me the right to give people advice because I'm past that stage now. There's no like right or wrong way to deal with a breakup, just so you know, everyone. I, this is just speaking on my own personal experience. I'm, I have no idea what I'm talking about ever. And also, the videos that I did watch, like trying to get over my ex, whatever, they're all like, write him a letter and then set it on fire. It's like, but that, you can do that, yeah, but it's not gonna make you feel any different. You're still gonna be in pain after. So there's not just some like magical recipe where you're just, it's gonna take all the pain away. Anyway, this is just what I did. Give yourself the first week, obviously I deleted my Instagram. That was probably the most pain I've ever been in my whole life. Let yourself cry as much as possible because there is a, there is actually a limit to how many tears you can release from your body. So let yourself cry as much as possible. I don't think anyone ever says this part either, but let yourself look at the old memories and the old pictures because everyone's like, delete all the pictures of him and shit. I don't think that's good because that's like pretending it didn't happen, but you also have to get to a point where you have to be grateful for the time that you had together because I'm not like oh, I wasted a year and a half of my life I had the best year and a half of my life ever like I had so much fun so I'm not gonna be like fuck you you wasted my time and I think it's kind of it's just lying to yourself you're like pretending that it didn't happen so I never deleted any pictures deleted anything from my Instagram I changed the lock screen on my phone that was like about it and took down pictures of my room but I'm not like deleting the whole chapter of my life because I had such a good time it wasn't terrible but like obviously it wasn't the best relationship ever but I had a good time so let yourself do that for like three weeks or so but there is a limit on it because you are gonna start annoying your friends and family because I have a friend Reese who has like really short pay like really little patience for me very very small so I know by the time he's losing the rag with me I'm like okay Keelan it's time to get your shit together he of course he sent flowers to my house and sending me letters and all like being the ni best nicest friend ever so caring but then there's a point to it where he's like Keelan come on you need to have a friend who's like will give you tough love and tell you when you're taking it too far there is a time where it hits and it's like oh give it a rest move on from it so just make yourself make sure you're keeping yourself in check and you're like oh I hope I'm not annoying my friends and family now but at this stage so that's why you have to give yourself the time at the start rather than avoiding your feelings and emotions further down the line just give yourself the three weeks to cry as much as you can look at all the old pictures look at all the old videos old tech oh no old texts because there is gonna be a time again where you're gonna relapse in your, you know, it's the same as a drug addiction, the same part of your brain, whatever. Even if you do block the mute them and everything, whatever, you're gonna see like a story of them because obviously I'm assuming if you were together for a long time, you have mutual friends. You're gonna see a story of them. And that's why I think I, oh, this was so good during quarantine because there was no like, my friends were with him all the time and he was doing funny shit and being real happy. Cause I just didn't see that. So I didn't see any of them. Cause I wasn't like thinking, oh, he's having sex with loads of people because he just, there's just no possible way it could be. Okay, and then after the three weeks, while you're reminiscing no matter how much how bad they treated you if they gaslighted you cheated on you whatever the fuck they did you can't help who you love so let yourself be sad because I know all your friends are gonna be like you deserve so much better but I know personally that shit doesn't change how you feel you're still gonna be like oh but I still love them and you know I don't think it helps either when people are like I never liked them like that's not nice <laughs> like that's not a nice thing to hear after you break up with someone but I think sometimes people think that it is you can allow yourself to feel sad no matter how they treated you I think it's fine I'm telling you personally that it's fine you can allow yourself to think that in an ideal world you'd want to be with them forever even though you know that they're bad for you I'm saying that's fine to feel that too but there is a limit on it so this is what I did after three weeks and I know in the previous oh my god my nose is so itchy so I'm talking to show you about me. I know I said in a previous video about the pros and cons list. That also didn't work because I have a very analytical brain. I try to use logic to like to make decisions, but I also am very emotional. So my emotional side in doing the pros and cons list outweighed the analytical side of me. Cause I was like, e I even love the cons. Like, so I can't say, like, I like that stuff about them. So even though other people would see that as like a negative side to someone, I'd be like, no, that like I accepted them for that, whatever. And I think that's what love is basically anyway. What I did instead was was you have to figure out what between the constants and the variables in the relationship. So stuff that stays the same in every single relationship, because I've obviously been in other relationships before. This is probably like the biggest heartbreak I've ever had because it was like my big love, whatever. Oh my God, Keelan, shut up, you're pathetic. I figured out what the constants were and what the variable variables were. So like, why was I so obsessed with this one? Why him? Figured out the constants, which is like the normal relationship shit, affection, because that's my love language. Like I love affection. And that's not something you can really get from someone else. Like you can't get that from your friends 
friends because I know like people love people love going on dates but you can actually do that with your friends and all that other stuff like going on holidays and shit I want to be sleeping next to you in bed spooning all night every night I want you to be kissing my shoulder tickling my back and holding my hand constantly that's something you can't get from being single really because even if you're like seeing someone or having sex with someone casually that's not something you really do intimately I was aware of that and because I'm also aware that I won't be able to get in a relationship anytime soon well I don't want to because I think it'll be unfair on the next person that I'm with because I am emotionally drained and I just know I won't be able to love as much as I should if they do like me back I just wouldn't have enough love in my heart yet because I'm still obviously healing I'm over the breakup but I'm still healing if that kind of makes sense I don't know so then you look at the variables so that's kind of like what this person had that you couldn't find in someone else and what you find is it's actually very small sometimes our mind just likes to torture us sometimes be like you're never going to find anyone like this ever again which obviously isn't true and I think that heartbreak is obviously just an experience that everyone has to go through unfortunately it is horrible but you are going to have to go through it at some stage and for me I kind of found it nice for some reason because it was kind of like oh this I'm actually live I'm experiencing life right now is that really oh my god sappy oh my god Keelan what once I figured out that I started to realize then like I will be able to find someone again but just obviously not soon if you're like jumping for a rebound well it depends obviously how much you love the person as well but if you're like going straight away like trying to get with people you're not going to be healed properly because it's kind of just like another distraction rather than addressing your emotions so that's why I think I benefited a lot from this because I feel like personally I don't know if people know this either but I feel like I'm literally a completely different person the tarot death card came out and I'm just reborn as a new person so that's why I think that I did a really good job of healing not that that constitutes me to give other people advice because I think people all heal in different ways because I'm not really in, in that much pain anymore but like the odd time I do still cry which is completely normal but because I don't feel this overpowering sense of I can't I'm not gonna be able to breathe without this person because that's actually genuinely what it felt like at the start oh my god I'm gonna start crying after this video I can feel it already. No, it's healthy. Keelan, stop. Thought of a little analogy of the three phases of a breakup. And also I'd like to say that healing is not linear. I don't know if I saw that in a TikTok or an Instagram quote, but it's so true because, well, the three weeks, obviously I was feeling shite, but then you'd have like an hour of the day where you're like, oh my God, bad bitch energy. I'm going to do so well. Fuck it. And then an hour later, you're like in so much pain. I'm never going to get over this. I'm never going to recover. And then a week later, you're like, oh my God, I'm reborn. And then you're crying the next day. But those gaps get bigger and bigger of when you feel happy to when you're crying. Yeah, anyway, I thought of an analogy to the breakup. I don't know if anyone was watching my Instagram live a few days ago. I'm doing this thing on Tarot Tuesday where I read my own tarot cards every Tuesday. I got the worst reading ever, by the way. <laughs> it was terrible. It was literally like abandonment and pain for the whole thing. And I usually get really, really good readings because my mom always does them for me. But I think I was just putting bad juju in them because I was in a bad mood when I did it. So if you watch my live, you'll know that. I was like, doing really well I was having great sleeps and I was feeling actually having moments of euphoria just being in silence on my own and actually smiling just for no reason so I was like I'm healing bitch I'm doing amazing and then one night I went to sleep and I think my subconscious mind was just like you think you're over him I don't think so so I fell asleep and I had a dream of the next person my ex was going to have sex with I also talked about this in the live as well but I have loads of dreams that come true so my brain was just like I've been waiting for this one turn it up so horrible so I'm hoping that doesn't come true but also if he's watching this he's like tell me who it is so I can text him so I had that dream and then and this was like kind of at the start so I wasn't fully over him yet but the three phases of thinking about this dream was number one comparing yourself to the person now I've never met this girl before I didn't even know she existed but I looked her up and she's actually a real person so comparing myself oh my god is she funnier than me I never like compare my looks because I think that's bullshit I want you to have sex with my soul I don't want people to just have sex with my looks have sex with my soul bitch I know I have a gorilla grip juicy gateway to heaven pussy but like have sex with my soul if that makes sense so never compare yourself to looks because I don't think people fall in love with that like it's real shallow and if you are with someone who you think is only for with your looks leave him is she gonna dress better than me is she gonna be funnier than me does she have better tits than me I know that is kind of looks but you know what I mean the next phase is like oh uh, is she gonna make him happier than I did that's the hardest one I think but then the next one is oh uh, I hope she treats him right.
right, okay? But then the final form, this is my final form. Oh, I hope he doesn't treat her the way, the same way he treated me. And I think that's peak elite getting over your ex shit. I literally was like, oh my God, I've reached a new level. If you've reached those four stages, you've made it queen. I think this is the end for us. I think we've made it. I think the actual final form is just like, I don't care. But I think it's impossible to actually get to that phase. But I think that I'd have to find someone that I know that I can love more than him to be able to get to that phase. So we'll see, that'll probably take a really long time. And I think it's okay to say that you're over someone, even if you do still love them. I've had amazing friends throughout this shit. I actually couldn't have asked for a better situation, to be honest. What was I gonna say? Oh my god. Oh yeah, a lot of my friends were saying, oh, like you can do so much better. That I'm not shitting on my friends being like, you don't know what to say to because then they're gonna be scared to text me. Inherently, I know that that's right in my brain. Someone better will come along who's more suited to me, whatever. But at the same time, like I know that I'm a really acquired taste. So I had the fear of like, no one's ever gonna love me because I'm so annoying. I'm a great girlfriend, I'm really loving and I'm nice and I know I'm kind, I'm caring and shit. I just, you ha- like imagine. I'm sorry, come on. It's like, what do you do for a living? Imagine me being on a first date being like, um, nothing. Oh yeah, I went private on Instagram today and everyone's like texting me being like, hope you're okay, queen. There's actually nothing wrong with me. I just don't want any more followers because I can't, I can't handle the pressure of it. I want to go home. I can't do it anymore. And I think people thought that I was, de it, it, that meant I was deleting my Instagram. Like I'm not, like you can still follow me, but it's just like, I want to keep track of who's actually following me. Cause I heard another rumor that there's some people like influencers that make loads of fake accounts to send other influencers like hate, fucked up. But I've seen it happen. Not to me because I block like three people on a da daily basis. Like anyone who gets kind of cheap. I literally blocked them because I can't like no negativity in my life please. Ow fuck. Ow. Because I knew I know that I'm an acquired taste. I prefer to be with someone to wait a really long time to get with someone to find someone who will accept like all of me rather than me conforming or trying to change myself for someone because that just ends up in you being dissatisfied with your life. And I'm like a real empath and I was talking about I don't know I should stop saying this to thousands of people on the internet but I, I feel like I can uh, Slightly mind read, slightly telepathic. Anyway, so actually stop listening to what I'm saying. Don't mind me. I'm actually talking shy. Like, don't mind me at all. This is not true. But I feel like I can. What am I talking? You stop. If you can hear what your boyfriend's saying all the time when you're lying in bed together, and for example, if you're asleep and he's on his phone, that makes for a very insecure girl. I really had to work on myself after that. It's fucked. It's an invasion of privacy, so I had to turn it off. But I'm also a real empath, so then I try to put up the wall. If anyone's a healer, you know what I'm. You know what I'm talking about. Sometimes you just have to block it out But when you start to do that you turn into a bad person Like you start to be mean because you have a lack of empathy then Because you're putting up this wall where you don't want to be in tune with that power that you have Am I talking absolute shite? I don't know if anyone knows what I'm talking about So then I shut it out because I like I want to have a healthy relationship But if you can hear your boyfriend saying that in their head Obviously you're gonna be really insecure uh, Yeah, it's a horrible thing to think about but like I hope no one else goes through this because it's really horrible I feel like I'm like there's sad vibes off this so yeah, I basically had to choose myself, my self-respect over relationships. Sometimes you just do, you have to do it. It can be hard because I'm still on a journey, you guys. But I don't look at myself and think I'm repulsed. Like I do believe that I have a lot to offer as a person. I think I'm pretty. Even though I get comments saying I'm a man, I think I'm a hot man. I smell nice. I'm intelligent. I'm emotionally in tune. I can be a bit too emotional sometimes. But uh, yeah, I really had to unlock the empath thing, which is hard. But I think it's good during quarantine as well. But I was talking a lot of shite. How do you block someone on YouTube? Haha. <laughs> Everyone's situation is different on how you ended the relationship. Like, are you still on talking terms? Did you do the whole, I'll still care about you, you can call me whenever? Or like, is it easier to get over someone if you both hate each other? I don't know. Reply in the comments. So I hope this gave someone comfort because I am completely emotionally exhausted. I'm fucking sick of it. Oh my god, I feel like I'm gonna start crying. Um, yeah, so. <laughs> See, emotionally exhausted. I'm just fucking... See, so yeah, I hope that made someone feel better. It's just to watch me also in pain. <laughs> I should probably end it here. I'm gonna cry in bed for a bit. Because you always feel better after you cry anyway. It's a good release of emotion. Don't hold it back. No toxic masculinity as well. If any men are watching this, cry, please. Just cry today. Because you'll feel so much fucking better after it. I'm running out of battery anyway, so it's probably a sign. Okay, bye. Love yous.